Well, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio with Blair. Go downstairs, get my coffee, and uh, um, phone rings at 8.35. Dr. Cruzy called to inform me that my son's just been brought in. He's unconscious, unresponsive, and seizing. Where would I like him to send him? He was wakeboarding at a church camp, and every morning they would have like a 6 a.m. group that went out before the daily activities. And so Logan went out that morning, he ramped, and he wiped out really hard. So he hit his head really hard on the water. As soon as he stood up on the boat, he threw up and fainted in the water. I walked into the hospital and, and they were like, Logan is unconscious, he is unresponsive, and he's bleeding on the brain. A blood vessel had pulled apart in his brain and he was bleeding in the brain and his brain had shifted like 60 to 70% to one side. I'm just thinking, oh Lord, these years, it was tough. It was one of the toughest days ever. Dr. Graham, who's just a world-renowned neurosurgeon, was on call. The miracle is not only did he get the blood off of his brain, but he actually found where he was bleeding from. One of the thousands of blood vessels in your brain, he actually found the one that was ruptured. And so he, he's not only able to get the blood off his brain, but he stopped the bleeding. He said, the only thing worse than your son right now is being dead. He said, I'm not gonna paint a picture that is not accurate. And he said, um, statistics are not in his favor. He was in a coma for four days, hooked up to every machine. I stayed with him, you know, 39 straight days. One time I was standing by his bed, I told him, Zan, I said, Logan, if you can hear me, give me a sign. <laughs> and he did like this. I don't really remember if I recognized who it was, but I did hear voices, you know, saying, you're going to be OK. You're going to be OK. We're here for you. I can feel when he touched me, and I could hear when he talked to me, but I just couldn't respond. It was really scary. I didn't know what was going on. And it kind of gave us a little bit of peace, a little bit of more hope, you know, wanting him to wake up so we can get this show on the road. When he had his craniotomy, they had to take the whole right side of his skull off. I had this big helmet on for a while because I didn't have this section of my skull on my head uh, for a good bit. And I mean, it looked like a 1957 football movie. Logan's recovery was very miraculous. Blair would come in, and uh, I remember one time she walked in, and I was in a wheelchair because I couldn't walk. And the next week, she came back, and I learned to walk again. When she came to hug me, I stood up and hugged her, and she just bawled her eyes out. Because the week before, she was uh, feeding me ice cream while I was sitting in my, my wheelchair. And it's just a special moment for me. We have a knock on our doors, and it's a uh, rehab, rehabilitation person, and uh, he's, he's here to see Logan. So we take Logan, we take him in a wheelchair, and we take him to the gym, and we get below 14 flights of stairs. And he was saying, you know, we're going to get up these stairs, and we're going to get down these stairs, because we're determined to make success happen, and we're going to get you through this. So I get in front of him. He gets behind him. I've got a washcloth in one hand, catching his drool that's coming out of his mouth. I've coaching my butt off as hard as anything I've ever done in my life. We get to the top of the stairs. I'm jumping up and down. I'm fired up. I'm so excited. And I looked at him. He was like, what, buddy? I said, now what? I said, hey, man, we're going back down. Let's go. He was in front of me, and I was walking down. All my weight's almost falling, and he's just right here holding me up. When we got to the bottom, I don't think I've ever breathed that hard in my life. It was incredible. Again, 
another miracle. What's ironic about that is not only do the, we never do we never have another Saturday rehab session, but we've never seen that guy again. I don't even know where to find him, to thank him. I mean, he's like an angel that showed up and, and gave us hope. Good. Keep working. Keep working. There's a double. Nice job. You know, Logan's getting better. And now here I am getting to, we're back coaching our team, and we've got a, a really good team. When they got to the Final Four, you get to go, like, get your ring size, and, and then you can say if you want something written on the inside. And I asked them to engrave in the inside of mine, life lighted to the Final Four. For the first time in school history, the Aggies are the champs. Just felt like I'd come full circle. It had been uh, it's nine tough months. At that moment, to have my son back, and then to go through this with our team, I think you have to go through some hard times to prepare you for something better down the line. You know, being able to still be a family that could stand on that ladder by without, you know, help um, and not be in a wheelchair next to the ladder says a lot about what we could get through. And uh, I just, I thank my dad every day for that.